Hello and welcome to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter Lavelle. Fifty years ago, the American naval vessel USS Liberty was brutally attacked by Israeli forces. The attack on the Liberty was one of the worst assaults ever carried out on a U.S. naval vessel in peacetime and committed by an allied country. Since then, the survivors of this unprovoked attack have been seeking justice. Cross-talking the U.S. as Liberty, I'm joined by my guest, Ken O'Keefe in New York. He is a political analyst and an ex-U.S. Marine who renounced U.S. citizenship. In Greenville, we have Philip F. Nelson. He is the primary author of Remember the Liberty, as well as author of two books on Lyndon Johnson. And in Lake Jackson, we cross to Daniel McAdams. He is the executive director of the Ron Paul Institute for Peace in prosperity. All right, gentlemen, crosstalk rules in effect. That means you can jump in anytime you want, and I always appreciate it. Phil, if I can go to you holding the book there in Greenville. Uh, you've written about this. Yeah. You, okay, just real quickly, I, I know it's, it, it, there's a lot of detail, and the book, is, uh, I've been told, is very good, but a lot of our viewers have never, ever heard of this event. So could you, in a nutshell, tell us what happened 50 years ago in the Mediterranean? Go ahead. Well, it's a long story, and I'll try to condense it as best I can, but it had to do with an attack that had been pre-planned, I believe, for many months, maybe two years in the planning. Yet it was, uh, it was portrayed as being a spontaneous war and that Egypt had attacked Israel. Uh, that was anything but the truth. And, and in fact, since then, most of the uh, subsequent leaders of Israel admitted that. Uh, Menachem Begin, for example, uh, admitted that. Others, uh, Yitzhak Rabin, admitted that. That it, was, that it had been provoked by Israel uh, against Syria, Jordan, and Egypt for many months. The, everything came off the track, though, uh, when, when the war commenced 10 days early. It was scheduled, had been scheduled for months, to start on June the 15th. It started on June the 5th because of all these uh, provocations that, that worked so effectively, it was beyond their ex expectation. Okay, 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 but, but Phil, attack, but let, which, let's, let's talk about the, the attack itself. What happened? How this ship was attacked by the Israelis. Give us, you know, five major points. What happened on that day? Go ahead. Okay, on that, on that day, after surveilling the ship for several hours, about six or seven hours, starting at six in the morning, uh, up to 13, at least 12 or 13 overflights of the ship, some as low as 1,000 feet, uh, by, by different Israeli aircraft. Uh, they, they were doing that for a purpose, and I believe the purpose was to map out exactly where the, the strategy would, would unfold, that is, what, what vulnerable points Okay. In addition All to right. the four right. Hang on. Guns. Okay, Phil, Phil, I want to get I want to get everybody in here because we got a lot to talk about here. You know, Ken, um, Phil's the expert on what happened here, but you know, again, I want to stress here that this assault in peacetime by a, a alleged ally on an American naval vessel is not part of popular culture or popular uh, common knowledge. No. And there's a reason for that. Isn't that true? Go ahead, Ken. Well, yes, if we could just recap briefly, this attack took place over two hours on a clear, blue, sunny day. This uh, ship was an allied ship of Israel. The United States had been supporting Israel hand and foot to that point. So when the Israelis were doing their overflights, all the Americans were waving to the Israeli jets to the point they could actually see the pilots in the cockpits. They were that close. This attack occurred over about a two-hour period. Thousands of rounds were fired, 50 caliber machine gun, napalm, rockets, they brought in submarine, uh, they brought in torpedoes. I believe four torpedoes were fired at the USS Liberty. One of them hit. It was an act of God that the captain managed to avoid three of the others. If that one torpedo had hit 15 inches over, it would have hit the boiler room and that entire ship would have sunk. Another aspect of this is a blatant war crime whereby when the captain actually gave the order to abandon ship, all of the life rafts that were launched in the water were shot out of the water by the Israelis. That is a patent war crime. The real objective here was to frame Egypt for having been responsible for this attack to kill every single member of that ship 
over 200. And ultimately, because they were not able to sink the ship, the Phantom jets that had been launched towards Cairo, which were nuclear armed, were not able to be used. But make no mistake about it, I believe, having read many of the details of this and read Phil Turney's excellent book, What I Saw That Day, that it is absolutely clear that the only thing that saved us from World War III at that time was the fact that that ship did not sink and there were witnesses. And it also brings up a very interesting subject about a Russian ship that was in the area yeah, that yeah. may very well have staved off the sinking of the ship yep. as well. So and this was a blatant attack. It was a false flag and it didn't go according to plan. But Daniel, but you know, when, when it's ever mentioned, I read a, a, an article in Haratz just a few days ago, it was a mistake. It was an honest mistake. That's what is being fed to publics right now whenever it pops up. Go ahead, Daniel. Well, certainly that's the word that came down from LG, LBJ on down. You know, the, the commission of inquiry, the court of inquiry was told before the investigation what the conclusion was to be. And I think he was quoted at least uh, maybe apocryphally saying, I'm not going to go to war or embarrass an ally for a few sailors. So that was obviously from the top on down. Uh, you know, uh, Admiral, uh, Admiral uh, McCain, the father of our great senator from Arizona, was obviously was involved in the cover-up as well. But you make a good point earlier. Most of America doesn't know what happened. I have to be honest. I have to confess. I didn't know anything about it until I was up on the hill probably 15 years ago, and someone dropped off a VHS. That shows how old it was. Yep. Of what happened, I put off watching it for a while because I had no idea yep. what this was all about. When you finally do watch and get the whole story, it's extremely compelling. What, why is it? I mean, it, it, for me, the, this has been a conspiracy of silence for 50 years. I mean, I know that you've worked with survivors. I mean, and, and Philip Giraldi and Ray McGovern you write um, uh, eloquently about it, and I'm, I'm very thankful for them. But, you know, it, you guys are having a hard time getting your story out. It's amazing. Go ahead, Phil. Okay, well, the reason for that was because of the cover-up that was immediate, immediately invoked by President Johnson directing it to the Joint Chiefs, to Robert McNamara, to uh, Admiral John McCain II, the father of the senator. And it was so effectively done and so brutally enforced. All, all of the survivors were threatened with prison time if, if they said a word about it to anybody, including their wives, their mothers, their fathers, any, anybody. And right immediately after the attack, after they were all, they managed to sur survive this, they were all dispersed throughout the world on different ships so that, that no two of them would be together anywhere. <laughs> and, and they were watched very closely to be sure that they didn't talk. And that, that cover-up still persists today. Right. That's the reason that 98% of the people have never heard of it. And those who do have generally accepted the canard that it was... It was just an accident. But it was not never an accident. Ken, it was planned Ken, for at least two years. One of the interesting things, Ken, is that the, the U.S. Uh, Liberty is the most decorated ship, I think, in, in American naval history. They gave them all the awards, all of the acolytes, but they did it in secret. They did it behind cor closed doors. I mean, they got, these, they got some kind of recognition, but absolutely zero public recognition because the, the true story would come out. This is not a mistake. This was an intentional attack. And the implication implications of that attack, uh, we feel to this very moment. Go ahead, Ken. Yes, indeed. And there are court transcripts. Uh, there are transcripts of tapes between uh, Israeli pilots and uh, the command centers in Israel in which the Israeli pilots are actually questioning the orders which are to attack because they understand very clearly that they are attacking an American ship. And the orders are repeated by the command centers in Israel to indeed attack the ship. There is no accident here. And where this becomes really relevant is that for a long time, Israel and the Jewish supremacist, Talmudic, satanic mass media that we have, which pushes agendas like weapons of mass destruction, which results in the death of a million to two million people in Iraq, a country completely devastated, that same power structure remains in place from 1967 to this day. And the cover-up of 9-11 and Israeli Mossad agents involved in 9-11, which is indisputable by any serious investigation, remains the same. And the real point here is that Israel can do anything, including murdering 34 American service members in cold blood and attempting to murder every single member of the USS Liberty so as to justify a policy which would have sucked American sons and daughters into a third world war because Israel does not have the integrity nor the courage or any kind of uh, honor whatsoever to go and attack its enemies itself. It uses America and continues to use America 
as sacrificial lambs to go off and fight their wars so that Israel can expand. This is the bigger issue, and the USS Liberty, as long as the American people refuse to face this and actually make sure that justice is served, we're going to continue to get more of the same of these false flag endeavors to sacrifice more and more Americans. And let us not forget the 22 American service members a day that commit suicide right. because they've been sent off to fight Israeli wars. You know, Daniel, when, when, I, when I understand the, uh, Lyndon Johnson's reaction, the president at the time, he was a coward. He was simply a coward. Well, he was a politician. So okay, that's true. That's, sorry, sorry, a sorry, that's a, I'm sorry. That's repetitive. Yeah, go ahead. But, you know, there is, there is this unfortunate taint, you know, and I think it's one way of keeping the conspiracy of silence. There's a taint of some sort of anti-Semitism if you bring it up. You know, I just met a Liberty survivor in April. He was at one of our conferences here. And, you know, this man had not an anti-Semitic bone in his body. What he cared about were the people he served with on that ship. What he cared about is having some acknowledgement of what happened, some validation of their experiences, for the historical record to be corrected. That's what he's looking for, and that's what's normal. And that's the grotesqueness of this entire cover-up, is because it didn't allow these soldiers and these sailors to have closure that's why they suffer from PTSD times 100. They couldn't even talk to their wives about it. And that's the most cruel injustice, I think, of all. Okay, gentlemen, I'm going to jump in here. We're going to go to a short break. And after that short break, we'll continue our discussion on the attack on the USS Liberty 50 years ago. Stay with RT. Okay, Phil, I'd, I'd like to go back to you in Greenville. Um, it, it seems to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the, the U.S. turning a blind eye to this mi gro uh, gross injustice done to the, uh, uh, the sailors of the USS Liberty, that, that it's, it seems to me an interesting point of departure because we have seen how the Israeli lobby influences American foreign policy, or actually even drives it, some people would say, in the Middle East. So if you can get away with committing murder, and I think that... You on the face of it, that's exactly what it was, committing murder, and you can get away with it. You can get away with just about anything else. Go ahead, Phil. Well, that's true, and, and it's obviously an atrocity that cannot be forgiven in any way, but it's important to, for me to uh, stress the fact that all of the other books ever written about the liberty sort of skipped over the involvement of Lyndon Johnson, and our book does not do that. It pins much of the responsibility on him. I believe that but having surrounded himself with, with uh, very overly zealous Zionists uh, as advisors, uh, n numerous men, I'm not going to name all of them, they're all in the book, of course, but uh, I, I believe that they, that he, through them and their counterparts in Israel, had planned this this uh, action for up to two years, and I believe that the sinking of the Liberty was was a piece that Johnson personally invoked. I believe that it was all driven by his desire to have another landslide election the following year in 1968, just as he used a previous false flag attack in 1964 called the Gulf of Tonkin as a means to ensure himself a landslide election in that year. That, that's what this was about for him. I, I, I think that no one has ever produced any kind of rationale that, that, that we, Israel could possibly benefit from such an attack. A lot of things have been projected. In that article, you, you, uh, one of you mentioned in the Haratz just uh, two or three days ago, uh, it was written by, by people who, and, and quoting Michael Oren, who ha, had been the previous uh, ambassador from Israel to the U.S. Uh, he had written a book as well as A.J. Crystal. Both of them are filled with the lies and the deceit that were planted at Johnson's order 50 years ago. Uh, and... The, I really need to cut in here. I, I'm not understanding the premise here. I, 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 can I please ask, are, are you... Are you, suggesting, are you suggesting that Israel was simply manipulated by Lyndon Johnson and that Israel wasn't very much having a huge interest in getting America into a fight with Egypt? Are, are you concluding that Lyndon Johnson manipulated Israel? Or am I mistaken here? I, forgive me if I am. 
I, I believe that that part of it was, uh, was primarily advanced by Johnson, Lyndon Johnson himself, for his own personal reasons. The, the, by well, the way, you have, you have so, to remember that it was the fourth day of a six-day war. Uh -huh. The war was essentially over. They'd already beaten uh, Egypt. They were, they were having peace negotiations at the UN. Well, I mean, Phil, uh, Phil you, you're the expert on it, but reason. a lot of people would say is that taking out the USS, USS Liberty would deny the Americans knowing exactly what the Israelis intended to do as that war was coming to an end, okay? And like uh, take, uh, illegally seizing Arab territory, Palestinian territory, the Golan Heights. I mean, there was a lot of, th the Israelis didn't want Washington to be listening to what their plans were. At all it seems to I me mean, logic would dictate that well, I, let me, I, uh, okay let me go to daniel no, I, no, I really no, like I to cut to, in I have, I have to okay I, I that is a theory that has been proposed okay i'm cut I mean, in. then there are others are daniel let me go to you again i kind of want to stress you know that this is kind of a ground zero moment here because ever since 1967 we've been able to see you know it's wag the dog a dog i mean i i do not understand the uh, how america uh benefits from its its uh, bizarre close relationship with israel what does the u.s get out of it what has it ever got out of it it, except for a lot of pain, a lot of blood, and a lot of wasted treasury. Go ahead, Daniel. Well, unfortunately, you're right. I mean, the Liberty, the Liberty attack was sort of ground zero in what has become a very unhealthy relationship between the U.S. and Israel. Uh, it's a one-sided relationship, as you point out. But I think the Israelis learned that if they can do something like this, this grotesque, with impunity, uh, they can do literally almost anything. And unfortunately, I would blame Israel less than I would blame the cowards in Congress, the cowards in the administration, the cowards in the media who are too afraid to question this for fear of being tarnished with some, some bad words, uh, they're afraid to do this. You know, members of Congress have said behind the scenes, you know, gosh, the Israel lobby is so strong, they'll never go out in public and say it. You know, it's, 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 it's something that's toxic on our own government, and I think that's where the focus should be. Why are they so afraid? Yeah. Oh, they might lose their job, they might get voted out of office. You know, it's pathetic. You know, you know, Ken, I, I, I seem to recall a congressman uh, running for re-election saying you could never be too pro-Israel in a, a congressional election. I think he's probably right. Listen, I, I really need to uh, may, pay my respects to the USS Liberty survivors, Phil Turney, and all of those who know damn well that that attack was carried out by Israel. And I don't deny for one second that Lyndon Baines Johnson is a first-class traitor on many levels and a pervert to boot. So I'm not in any way defending that traitor. However, to suggest that Lyndon Baines Johnson manipulated the Israelis into an attack for his own personal gains is insulting and absolutely contrary to the facts. As I mentioned earlier, there are radio transcripts which are now a matter of public record in which the Israeli pilots themselves are saying, are questioning the order to attack what is clearly an American ship. And the order is repeated to attack the ship. So please don't tell me or anybody else that Lyndon Baines Johnson manipulated that. It is insulting. Now, I'd like to get back to another point as well, which is that, of course, as soon as we talk about the Jewish state of Israel and the Jewish supremacist Talmudic ideology, which effectively pits all of us, the rest of us, the goy, as cattle to be used, and we look at the actual pattern, the Levon affair, the USS Liberty, and direct, direct Mossad involvement in 9-11. In fact, it was a joint operation between U.S. intelligence and military and Israeli Mossad agents Mossad agents who were arrested on the day with explosives in their bands, celebrating and high-fiving all of this on record. Israel has continued to get away with their false flag manipulations in order to use American sons and daughters as cattle to be sacrificed for their wars. And I really seriously resent the idea that Lyndon Baines Johnson did this and manipulated Israel. I find that really disgusting and borderline treasonous myself. No serious historian can seriously put that forward, and I imagine that book has one hell of a lot of tap dancing in it, if indeed that's what it says. 
Phil, do you, not, I don't know what percentage of the documents that have been released here. Do, do you see that ever happening where um, uh, yourself and other writers would have access to more of the documents? Because, it, because it's been a long conspiracy. I know that in 2003 that there was some kind of investigation. It was uh, Admiral Moore that was involved with that. I mean, when will, do you think the public will ever have access to that? Or do you, are you even convinced those documents even exist anymore? Well, there was one document that does exist, and, and it was discovered by accident by James Ennis when he was at the LBJ Library, of all places, uh, which, which was a document dated April the 27th of 1967, almost two months before the attack, that clearly showed that that, that operation, the larger operation, not the attack on the Liberty, but the, the plans for the Six-Day War, which was called Frontlet 615, were discussed, and somehow that document was misplaced, inadvertently put into a file, the Liberty file, that was at the LBJ library, and missed by everybody until about 1988, when James Ennis discovered it. He showed it on that video, the BBC video, Dead in the Water. And it shows that that, that committee, the 303 committee it was called, was discussing uh, the operation, and that someone noted on that mem memorandum, it was it was basically the minutes of this meeting. Th he handwritten on there is that there, there would be a submarine in UAR waters, United Arab Republic. That's Egypt. Uh, and and so how I mean that is positive proof that there w there was something on the agenda that was a continuing agenda item and who knows for how long because the rest of the documents have never been uh, released probably never will be and and it, and it hides the fact that it was that 303 committee headed up by Walter Rostow and there were there were a number of other people of course this head of the CIA Helms McNamara they were all in this committee it doesn't mean necessarily that this other piece of it, the USS Liberty attack, was was ever known to all of the people in that committee, but certainly some of them okay. must have. Then they he, had to. Have let's done. talk about no. And, it's, and it's, and I, I, I resent the other. The, we're, the other. We're re rapidly running out of time here, Daniel. Um, what do you think? Give me your assessment here. Let's say somebody in Middle America is flipping the stations, and they suddenly see us talking about this. What do you think the average response will be? They'll probably think it's a movie or a docudrama, I suppose. Go ahead, Daniel. Well, they probably won't see it because <laughs> they're trying to prevent RT from being seen in, in middle America. <laughs> but if they did, they probably feel they were in a minefield. It's something that they've never heard before. And, you know, it, that's what makes it such an unhealthy relationship, uh, that we can't talk about these things in a rational way. The issue is we are still seeing the same players in the same place today. We see Israel doing cross-border attacks on the Syrian army in defense of al-Qaeda, in, in defense of ISIS. We see the U.S. and Russia playing there. We see us being on the verge of World War III once again. That's why it's important for us to look back objectively on history and take a lesson from that so that we can survive you know, into the next year without a world war. And that's what I'm, af what I'm afraid is not happening. Okay, gentlemen, we've run out of time here. I want to speak to, directly to all the survivors of the USS Liberty and their families. I'm very happy we made this program, and I hope it gives you a little bit of comfort. Many thanks to my guests in New York, Greenville, and in Lake Jackson. And thanks to our viewers for watching us here at RT. See you next time. And remember, Crosstalk Rules.